Thanks for joining us at Right on Replicas, where we bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet. This review covers the round 2 re-release of the Jawbreaker Wild Rail Dragster in 125th scale. This is kit number MPC 821, and this release has the original parts with new decals. The overall kit quality is typical of the 70s, however, with few parts and simplistic detail. You get 90 pieces molded in white and chrome with tampo printed soft vinyl slicks for the rear. The motor is the majority of the build and it's mostly chrome plated. With some uh, wiring the motor looks great however. The frame consists of multiple parts and fits well and my sample was straight with no issues. Round 2 includes that really great set of tampo printed slicks to set this model off and final assembly size is length 8 width 3 inches and height 2 and a quarter inches. Here are the decals for this kit. As you can see they're very colorful and the registry is good. I strongly recommend using some decal setting solution to make it fit those contours but as always use the manufacturer's safety and use guidelines when using any of the products mentioned here in the review for your own protection. For most of the construction I use Model Master liquid cement and sometimes a slow setting tube glue but other adhesives are used too for strength like super glue and white glue for clear parts. Mostly the paints are Tamiya acrylic bottle paints that are shot through an airbrush or rattle can paints that can be used for things like primers. Assemble the parts for your motor and begin by putting together the block and heads and paint it the color of your choice. I did mine in body color. Then add the oil pan intake with assembled blower and bug catcher and then valve covers and the front cover. Now paint the belt flat black and add the belt and fuel pump. Assemble the headers and paint those chrome. With its motor exposed I thought that this uh, kit needed some wiring so I made a homemade uh, distributor and wiring kit and put it together. Uh, basically you can buy these on the internet all done and ready to go but I just uh, made one so uh, you drill out the hole for the um, distributor shaft and then install it with some super glue and then uh, drill out the whole locations on the heads uh, for the spark plug wires and put a little piece of black um, uh, wiring uh, cover onto the plug wires and glue them into place and uh, set your wires so that they look natural. Now glue the headers into place and then uh, the four breather sections um, glue those into place on the valve covers. Assembling the frame, gather the parts, and then assemble the two frame halves with the center cross member, front bar, and rear bar. I would use some super glue to uh, assemble this frame uh, prior to paint, and then after it's all together, paint the unit black. Add the brake lever, pedal, and linkage. Pull these parts out of the box and paint the seat flat black with red seat belts and aluminum fasteners. The differential is assembled and painted steel, as is the axle. Then the transmission mount is painted black. Slide the axle into the frame and through the differential. Then attach the transmission mount to the frame and add the transmission in place with the clutch pedal installed. Assemble and install the fuel cell and add the seat to the frame. Now grab the parts for the wheels and tires and they can be assembled and installed. But use a sheet of uh, fine sandpaper to press and roll the tread uh, on the tires so that uh, it gives them a worn look. It roughs them up and they really look more realistic that way. Now paint the brake calipers gold and install the brakes to the axle. Paint the rim backs and the lock disc flat black. The outer rim on the rim uh, is uh, backs is aluminum and install the rim back onto the axle. Then add the lock disc and only glue that part so that the wheels turn. Insert a, front, a rim front into the tires and add the tires to the rim backs. Now add the rear tires to the rear axle. Assemble the steering wheel and column and install that onto the frame. Now add the linkage from the column to the linkage connection, that's the green arrow. Then paint the fuel line steel and install that from the fuel cell to the fuel pump, that's the red arrow. Paint the lower body section uh, panel a body color and then using some super glue and remember to scrape off the plating at the contact points. Attach the axle and the tie rod. Install this unit to the frame. Then add the steering linkage and the sway bars. 
Assemble the inner and outer front rims and then install the tires by rolling them onto the rims. With the uh, assembled front chrome wheels you can just uh, add those to the front suspension hubs and they should stay in place. If not, you may want to glue them to keep them in place. Here is the completed rolling chassis. She's looking pretty tough so far. Here's where you'll have to do a little extra if you want a great looking model. The body is in two parts and it's split right down the center. They need to be glued together and this will leave a big parting line through the center of the body. Use some putty of your choice and fill the area of the body's parting lines then allow the putty to dry and sand it smooth. Repeat until you get a nice smooth body finish. Use some good quality primer to cover the putty and fill any blemishes. Sand and repeat until smooth. Once you get the smooth finished body you want, wet sand the primer with a, a real fine grit sandpaper to prepare it for painting. I used a bright lime green color for my body to give it some real pop. Now you can put the decals on the body. I strongly suggest you use some decal setting solution which is available online or at hobby stores to make sure that they settle into the contours and adhere to uh, any of the surfaces. The inner shield slash uh, floor pan and wheelie bars are painted flat black. Install the inner shield inside the body shell and install the wheelie bars onto the axle and the body onto the frame. Final parts assembly uh, includes the rear airfoil which is an optional part and the nose cover. When I test fitted the nose cover to the body, I noticed that there was an interference with the fuel pump. It sits too far out of the nose cover to fit flush. So I just notched the uh, cover to allow clearance for the fuel pump and the fuel line. And I used some sandpaper on a dowel and just sanded it away until it fit and looked good. Assemble the wing with the side wings and uh, mount this. Then paint it chrome and paint the seat hoop a flat black and attach it to the frame. Attach the wing onto the seat hoop and the frame. Then paint the chute flat black and install that onto the rear. Now paint the nose cover body color and install that too. There is an optional helmet that can be painted and set along with the car. There won't be many unused pieces for this kit. Uh, there is a set of chromed short headers and the extra decals that you don't use. I also had the distributor and coil as I used a wired one. This kit has been around for years, so the fit and finish is not the greatest. There's a little bit of flash and the body's a um, poor design with it cut in half down the middle. But once you've uh, built the car and finished it off, it looks great. Uh, it's got a nice shelf sitting presence and with some basic work and wiring, it could be a contest entry. The build is simplistic but challenging enough to keep the average builder happy. The, molder, the motor builds nicely and while mostly chrome, it looks good when it's done. The optional short headers are a nice touch if you want to use those. And the frame was straight and while it seems kind of flimsy, once it was assembled it was pretty solid. The body's the worst part and the only detriment to the build. The split halves don't fit well and you really need, need to use some styrene or something inside to make the attachments stronger. The roof must be uh, made a little stiffer or it will break. So once finished and assembled, the car was uh, fairly solid and held together well. I was expecting the front suspension to come apart, but uh, with some super glue and the attachment points available, it's, it holds up pretty tight. It's a great looking build for the nostalgic dragster builders, and it's a great return item from round two. I liked it, and I think that you will too. Now all I need is a race trailer. We hope that you like this premium step-by-step -step review and so that you don't miss any future ones, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. But you can find us on Facebook and also at our website www.rightonreplicas.com. Thanks!